How has I mean, that been possible for them to just go back on their word so so sickeningly? They have the power to do it. I mean, the fact is that we've lived in a world where we have believed that you know we sh people follow norms and uh, they say what they're going to do and then they do it and you know that that oh we don't abide hypocrisy and stuff like that. But none of that matters. What people say doesn't matter. What matters is power and you know, the conservative supermajority gained enough power that they don't need to care what anybody thinks about what they said in the past and they can just do whatever they mm -hmm. want. And that's the fact. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, people say that John Roberts, the chief justice, uh, would prefer to go more slowly because he is worried about the legitimacy of the court. But the other mm -hmm. five justices uh, don't need to listen to him anymore because they're all, you know, radical ideologues and they can do whatever they want. Uh, and so, the thing that I'm trying to impress upon people is that power is really, really important. Um, you know, just who has the power in the system? The Supreme Court does have a lot of power. The president has a lot of power. Uh, however, we have been tricked into thinking that all that we can do in the political system is to, you know, plead with those in power to do the right thing, to call our senators, to call our representatives, right? And say, please, please, please do the right thing. And it is important uh, that we do that, but it is just important that we as people, as a group, build power ourselves. And that is something that we can actually do if we start thinking about it that way. Rather than just saying, we're going to vote once every four years, we're going to phone our senators. How can we build power to make change ourselves? And by that, do you just mean protesting? Do you also mean... Uh, aligning yourself with groups who are already organizing and doing that work? Are there other things on top of that that, that help the people? I mean, we also need to fucking come together. I've been talking about this so much for, for years now that we need to be able to come together and organize and stop nitpicking each other to fucking death. While I understand yeah. it's important to hold each other to certain standards, we can't organize a piss up in a fucking brewery. And it's terrifying because <laughs> we're well, being constantly distracted and we're trying to deal with every single issue all at once. And so many issues are completely intersectional. I have so much time for that, but we are trying to make sure that every single issue gets heard from every second, single angle of every single intersection all at the same time, whereas they are going after our rights one by one by one in an organized mm -hmm. fashion. If they came at all of our rights all at the same time, so let's say gay marriage, interracial marriage, uh, abortions, um, uh, the wealth gap, uh, healthcare, etc. If they came for everything, all of this like price gouging, etc., they would never be able to get anything through because it would just be like a wave of chaos coming at us. They pick one mm -hmm. fucking human freedom and luxury at a time, and they meticulously, yeah. in an organized and and uh, united fashion, go after them. And then we try to combat that by coming for everyone's rights all at the same time to try and defend them rather than just organizedly going after one by one by one just getting our rights back one by one by one yeah this really fucking stresses me out <laughs> i mean you're you're right that is exactly what they're doing they're going and they're doing it by organizing by being organized you know the the anti-abortion movement the forced birth movement as you very well put it uh, has been organizing since Roe versus Wade. They've been working on it for 50 years. Um, and they don't just call their senators. They have groups. They have think tanks. They have community groups. They have, I mean, if you go to, if you go to uh, a college that's anywhere in a, you know, semi-conservative area, you can go join the anti-abortion group and they'll have a meeting every single week and they'll tell you what you can do that week to advance the movement. Um, that's what they did. And they slowly built we their have, power. Yeah, they had, they had, sorry, they had trigger laws in state for like, mm -hmm. for decades. Yeah. I don't know that we have similar trigger laws in place to no. take back our rights. We, we've been, you know, folks who care about reproductive rights, unfortunately, uh, we have been complacent and we've allowed, uh, it was, oh, there's a Supreme Court decision. It's really hard to reverse a Supreme Court decision. That'll probably never happen. And, uh, you know, the, the folks who were not in power at the time, the anti-abortion people, organized to build power until they were able to finally flip what they wanted to flip. And so how did they do it, right? They didn't just call, this is the really important part, they didn't just call the senators and say, hey, we want you to do it. They built entire structures of power that got specific people elected, uh, that got the Mitch McConnells of the world elected by the anti-abortion movement. And then those people, the Mitch McConnells of the world, got judges put in place, like very carefully and methodically and in an organized way. The conservative legal movement, 
movement trained up judges to, you know, they, they injected the idea that, you know, Roe was wrongly decided into, you know, uh, this the legal mainstream. And then they only appointed judges that agreed with that philosophy that they invented. Um, and then they methodically built that until they finally got enough of those, you know, types of people put on the Supreme Court that they could get the decision that they wanted. It took them 50 years, but they did it. And we're going to need to do the same thing, but in reverse. So when I say build power, I'm not talking about like protesting is one form of power, but it's kind of a loose form of power because it shows your rage. It shows your anger. But like, how does it actually make the change that you want to see mm -hmm. in the world? Like what what are you doing to literally force the change that you want to make happen happen? Um, what is the pressure point that you're working on? And that's the really important thing that you need to think about. Yeah.